good morning everyone and welcome back to the rainy land <laughs> i remember one time on a holiday when someone asked me where i was from and i said england he just went ah the rainy land and that's now what i call it every time i come back off holiday so it really does feel like it today especially today it is dark it is miserable it is such a gloomy day like i really do feel like i have come back and it is just the middle of autumn like literally other actually it's not that chilly it's a bit weird at the moment because it's not the coldest that it's been but it is really dark really gray and really miserable and it is even getting to the point now where when i wake up in the morning it is pitch black outside so i am having to start to rely on my lumi light which makes me a little bit sad but i am glad to be back it is lovely to be home back in my beautiful home surrounded by all of my favorite things and it's a really exciting vlog today actually because i have had some real big home updates that i need to show you but i'm just currently doing my makeup and getting myself ready for the day i thought we could debrief because it's the first time i've seen you since i'm back i did have a little bit of a nightmare journey home i'm not gonna lie to you it was not fun getting back home yesterday we should have arrived home at about maybe 6 p.m we deliberately booked a like middle of the day kind of mid-afternoon flight we didn't end up getting home till about 11 o'clock at night because of all the delays um and we were at Genoa Airport. We had to fly with Ryanair, unfortunately, which is one of those things that if we had the choice, we would never, ever fly with Ryanair. But they were one of the few, um, like, airlines that flew to Genoa, which is the closest airport to Portofino. Otherwise, we would have had to go to Pisa, which is a good two and a half hours away. So we decided to, do, like, to risk it for a chocolate biscuit, go for Genoa Airport and fly with Ryanair and... <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be flying with them ever again if I can help it. They're just a very unreliable airline. If you're not from the UK, you might not know who Ryanair are. But anyone from the UK will probably be like, yeah, you shouldn't have flown with Ryanair. Because we're at the airport. And do you know, it's like a really, really small airport. We got picked up at 12. Got to the airport about two and a half hours before our flight. The check-in desk wasn't even open. They didn't open the check-in desk until about an hour before the flight was due to take off, which we were like, that's really odd. That doesn't give anyone very much time to check in their bags, but okay. So we had to wait around to be able to check in our bags, get through security, um, and then um, we got to the other side and there was just like nothing. There was barely any like restaurants. There was one little duty-free shop, you know, that sold all the classic like giant Toblerones and like huge bags of M&Ms, but there wasn't really like a W. H. Smith or like anywhere you could just buy a sandwich, a drink, and like a wee bag of chocolate buttons or something like that. Um, so we were like, right, we'll go through to where our gate is because our gate had been announced. We were like, we'll go through to the gate, maybe there's something there, you know, to get through passport control. And once we got there, it was just bedlam is the only way that I can describe it. And I think it didn't help that basically there was our flight to Stansted, there was a flight to Manchester, and there was a flight to Bu Bucharest within the space of about 20 minutes of each other so there was so many people crammed into this tiny little space there was nowhere to sit i literally had to stand for about two and a half hours until it started to kind of like you know people started to leave and like get um to their flights and other than the Bucharest flights, the Manchester and the Stansted flight both got delayed. And they didn't even tell us, which is really bad. Like, until about 10 minutes before we were supposed to start boarding, that's when they announced that the flight was delayed. And it was delayed by an hour and 20. And we were like, surely you'd have known that this is going to be delayed by an hour and 20 minutes. Because the plane clearly had only just taken off from stansted on the other side so they should have uh they just should have told us so much more information i feel like that's quite a common theme at the moment it's just airlines not really giving the right info not being very helpful like the staff bless them the ground staff were really you know trying to help and it was one of those things where it wasn't their fault at all like they couldn't really do anything um but everyone's getting really hot everyone's getting really miserable no one can sit down and it just honestly it felt like absolute carnage at the airport so we finally took off maybe about three hours later and then it ended up taking an hour and a half to get through security the other end at stansted um i would say if you're flying from stansted at the moment look at getting fast passes for security because we actually coincidentally on the plane sat next to the videographer from the wedding so i was chatting to him loads because they were amazing like the photographers and videographers they worked so hard they literally didn't take a break i kept because i've got a couple of friends who are like wedding photographers i kept running over to them like do you want some water do you want some food because i know what it's like like they just never get time to stop um 
So I was chatting to him and he'd actually booked a fast pass for security. He was like, yeah, I learned my lesson the last time I was here. So I would say if you're traveling from Stansted, definitely book a fast pass through the passport control and through security because oh, it just took us so long to get through. Um, and then the other side, once we got there, Honestly, this feels like such a story time, but I feel like a lot of the time I don't really tell you when these things happen. I mean, obviously it's like, you know, it's travel at the moment. Everyone knows it's a little bit of a nightmare. And there's always a reason why I don't vlog on travel days because I always just find them a little bit stressful. Um, but then when we arrived, like finally got through passport control, got to where our luggage was and it was already coming off of the conveyor belt, which we were really happy because we did think, I know a lot of people are having to wait a really long time at the moment for their luggage. Um, although to be fair, that did give them an hour and a half to get it off the plane. So um, we got to the other side and there was someone with Alex's luggage trying to unlock it. And we just thought it was someone that had picked up his suitcase accidentally. And they were trying their own lock on it and it wouldn't like work. So we came over and we were like, oh, sorry, excuse me, I think that's our case. And Alex was like, oh, you know, obviously I'll unlock it and show you. So he unlocked it. And they were like, oh, okay. And then they didn't wait around. And th like, surely you'd think if they'd picked up the wrong case, they would sit, wait around at the conveyor belt for another blue case to come off. But they didn't. They like walked in the completely opposite direction like as fast as they could. And I just looked at Alex like, they just try to steal your suitcase. I mean, not that there's anything valuable in there. Um, you know, whenever really stupid enough, like especially when it comes to, you know, my designer bags and like anything like that, I'll never put them in the hold luggage just because of the risk of losing them. Like, you know, it gets bashed about on the airport and stuff like that. But yeah, I was just looking at these people like, did they just try to steal? And I think they are, I think because they know that everyone's taking so long to get through passport security, passport control, border force, whatever you call it. I think they are like, going through people's bags and trying to steal things. And we were just like, what the hell? But nightmare travel aside, we had an absolutely amazing time. I mean, we got home safe and sound and that's the important thing. Um, it was just a really, really long day of travel and obviously got to bed quite late. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so so glad to be home but it was an absolutely amazing time like a seriously incredible wedding i'm sorry if i seemed a little bit preoccupied like i felt like with the vlog i kind of would just like dip in and out but i'm i'm hoping it's understandable while i was preoccupied so obviously we were there for a family wedding i wanted to make sure that i was really present i wanted to make sure that i could enjoy it and that you know i could spend time with alex's family and that we could just enjoy this once in a lifetime wedding because it was for some family members that have literally been wanting to get married for like the last four years you know with covid all the postponements and everything like that and it was such an emotional wedding everyone was crying when they were walking down the aisle there wasn't a dry eye in sight because you could just see the joy on their face and the kind of like the feeling of we're finally here and it really was absolutely incredible and as you would have seen i wore the adriana papel dress which i had loads of compliments on i absolutely adored that dress i felt so beautiful in it i felt so secure and i would definitely say if you're looking for like an autumn winter wedding dress that's a great one because because it's like darker colors i feel like it can go really well with autumn winter and what i would do is maybe pair it with black accessories because i was trying to make it a bit more summery i did white accessories i did my saint laurent bag my sector short and my extania espadrilles but what i would do in winter is maybe some black sandals or even the black espadrilles and a little black bag and i feel like that would be a really great way to pull the dress into a bit more of like a wintry look and a wintry vibe um but yeah portofino is such a beautiful location um one thing i will say though is that if you are going just be prepared to spend like it is a really spendy location which i can kind of understand because it is a very like a lot of celebs go there and it's a very popular lo location for like you know million pound yachts and all of that jazz but it was like 20 euros for a cocktail you know that kind of price like it was a it was a lot but definitely worth it if you want to go for maybe like four or five days i would say it's such a beautiful place i would definitely add that to your bucket list such an amazing amazing holiday if you can literally hear the rain as i'm doing my makeup but i can just hear it bouncing off my window and i'm not gonna lie even though it feels like the middle of autumn, it is so gloomy and miserable. I'm kind of loving it. I feel like going away on like a late summer holiday, like an end of summer holiday, it feels really nice to come back to like the new season. And I'm having a bit of a cozy day at home today as well. So I'm kind of not mad about it because it is one of those days where I am not planning on leaving the house. I'm not planning on going anywhere. I'm going to be at home enjoying it. And as I said, I've got so many updates to show you. I've had quite a few parcels arrive whilst I've been away. 
which I'm really excited to unbox with you, and something huge, something huge has changed, something huge has arrived that I cannot wait to show you, so I'm just gonna sort myself out, get my jewelry on, get myself dressed, and then I can show you, because I have been blabbering away to you whilst I've been doing my makeup. Honestly, I feel like I've had word vomit this morning, but it's really nice just to have a bit of a catch up and have a bit of a kind of debrief with what's happened. So I always feel like when I go like a day or two without vlogging, I have so much to tell you and I just wanted to like, you know, give a bit of a chat about what happened on our journey home. But we're back, we've got exciting things happening and it is a whole new season. So I am a very happy bunny. It's a hard thing to know That your soul will stay hollow cozy with a capital C today. Oh my goodness, the rain is coming down hard. It's so dark, it's so dreary, but it's so autumnal. I have just put on one of my favorite Amazon fashion shirt dresses. As I said, it's not too chilly. This is kind of the perfect transitional um, like outfit if you're looking for something for now. A shirt dress is so perfect. You'd have seen the recent Karen Miller one I picked up. I've been loving this one. I feel like they're just so easy to chuck on and layer up as well. Like I'll just throw a jump or a cardigan over the top. You can wear it with slides, you can wear it with flats, you can wear it with boots. There's so many different ways to wear them. And I've just gone really, really minimal with my makeup. Like honestly, I have got barely anything on, which you'd be surprised considering how long it took me to put it on this morning because I was in a really chatty mood. But as I said, I have some really, really exciting things to show you and something huge huge has arrived so we have a new sofa oh my goodness let me take you through and show you because it's a room that I've spoken about a little bit we kind of left hanging for a little while when we first moved in, but it's finally time to start kickstarting the kind of renovations in there and doing it up and making it the perfect cozy autumn winter space. So, well, it's safe to say that this room is looking slightly different from when I last showed you. We have a TV on the wall, we've got a little fireplace put in, and most excitingly, Ta-da! We have a sofa in here. I could not be happier. This is something that we've waited for for so long. And I'm so, so happy with it. As I said, I'm really embracing the tones in here, really embracing the color palette. So we've gone navy blue and it is actually a sofa bed. Cause as I mentioned before, this is like our guest room when people come and stay, just so that they've got like their own bathroom downstairs. They've got a little bit more space to roam about. They can close and shut off. They don't have to like take someone's office or anything like that. And it means that they can have their own space. And it's a really, really lovely cozy room. So let me give you a few updates. So Update number one, which is obviously gonna make the camera go really weird, are these kind of blinds. Now these are actually one of the best things I've ever bought. They're from Ikea. And I initially bought them for upstairs in my office because I wanted a bit of privacy um, because it obviously looks out onto the street and I'm changing, I'm, you know, like changing outfits, stripping all of the time. So I wanted to make sure that I had privacy without taking away from the light. So these let just as much light through. They look really, really lovely. And basically you just cut them to size. Um, so I've done like four panels for the bay window and you just cut them exactly to size. They look really, really great. I mean, for a rented property, they are perfect. Obviously, if I was to have like owned the place, then I would definitely get proper blinds and shutters fitted because I feel like blinds and shutters for a bay window just look amazing but these have been such a great alternative to use for now and as you can see it still lets all of the light in the room so it doesn't detract from that. We've obviously got this chair still which is a Dunelm purchase from a really really long time ago. I absolutely love it. We've got the same chair in the kitchen like big open plan kitchen living room as well 
And this is another Don Elm purchase. I absolutely adore Don Elm. I feel like they have really, really great, really affordable furniture. And I've been looking for something like this for so long. So this is called the Beatrice sofa bed. It's a three seater. It fits really perfectly in the room and it looks so, so lovely. I will be styling it up a little bit. I feel like it looks a little bit plain at the moment, but I am gonna style it up, add some throws, add some blankets and all of that jazz. As you can see, we've got a TV on the wall finally. Last time you saw this room, it was literally just a mount there ready to be attached. Um, so we just bought this new Samsung. It's basically the exact same as our other TV, but just a smaller version of it. It fits really, really nicely. I wish we didn't have the wires coming down, but beggars can't be choosers. And then this little fireplace oh my goodness let me show you this because this is the cutest thing ever if you have a property where they've ripped out the fireplace or you can't get something authentic this is amazing because let me show you how good does that look and there is a setting where it can like emit heat and things like that but it literally just looks like a real fire burning under the fireplace it's just a plug-in electric little thing and it's so so good so I will link where I got this because I am obsessed and if you're like me and you really love these kind of like period features like I love the fact we've got this open fireplace but it breaks my heart that they clearly ripped out the fire the people that lived here before so I love this I think it's so so great so the snug is a finally coming together which makes me so so happy i feel like we've been waiting for so long for this room as i said we just wanted to give it a bit of a break in summer because we knew we wouldn't really use it so at the front of the house we have like a south facing garden so the front of the house is north facing which means it doesn't really get any daylight it doesn't really get any sunlight so it's quite a dark room naturally but that's kind of what makes it even coziest it's like the perfect room to use as like a movie cozy just really wholesome space i absolutely adore it it's definitely not finished i still have lots to do and a few new bits that i have ordered it to show you to start dressing it up one of the things i definitely need to do is sort this corner out over here i currently just have uh, the mirror and the drying rack over there and i have no idea where i'm going to put alex's golf clubs because they are so ugly like a big red thing we've got some like baskets and blankets and one of the things i want to do as well is change these handles um so these are kind of like a bit weird wooden half blue half wooden handles so i actually bought some new ones that i'm going to replace them with and i want to style up the shelves a little bit more kind of get rid of all of the you know consoles alex has put all his gaming stuff in here so it's going to be a gaming room for him as well and just tidy it up a little bit so it starts to look a little bit more presentable so these are the handles that I picked up. I actually just got them from John Lewis and they're these really lovely like gold knobs uh, to go onto them. And I just think they're so much nicer. We definitely want more of like a brassy kind of finish in there, which I think will be really lovely next to the navy blue. So I think just changing these up will make such a difference. I always feel like there's so much that you can do that are just like really little things to change up the vibe of a room or change up like how it feels and just make it a little bit more your own. And I feel like this is gonna be a great way of just switching it up. You know, I'm not the best at DIY, but all I need to do is take those handles off and put these on. And I think it's gonna make such a huge difference in that room. Okay, one on, one off. I feel like that just looks so much better than these. Oh, the bronze, the like brass tone, it's absolutely gorgeous. I feel like it goes really well with the blue as well. So now just to swap out the rest of them, sort out this corner and start getting it to a bit more of a presentable state. I mentioned that I've been doing a little bit of shopping and I think I got a little bit overly excited because not one but two giant next home bags have arrived and I think I just got a little bit overly excited about a new room to decorate and a new interior space to update and I got really really inspired I was on next home the other day and actually they have so many gorgeous pieces for autumn at winter so I'll link them down below but I placed a rather large haul of things that can go in the living room in the snug that I can style up with and I really want to go for more of a like British heritage I'm gonna put this down this is so big i want to go for more of like a british heritage vibe in that room like really classic really traditional i think would just be really really lovely um that's part of the reason why i really loved that sofa bed because it's a bit more of like a traditional style it's a bit more of like a classic kind of shape with regards to like a sofa i was choosing between a few different ones on dunelm and i'm so glad i'm so so happy with the one that i went with because it's also like a nice not too squishy but not too firm so i feel like i feel like it's gonna get really really like comfy with time once you kind of like you know 
once you've kind of got your butt print in there, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so I want to go for like quite a classic British look in there. I feel like because that front room is a little bit more traditional in it's kind of like the fact that it's got the bay window, the like fact that it's got all the cornices, the Artex ceiling, like it just feels a little bit older in there, which I really, really like. So I wanted to go much more of like a British heritage in there, really incorporate those darker wintry tones I thought would be so, so lovely. So let's get into the giant bag of goodies that i picked up from next time honestly they have so many things on there the first thing i'm so excited about so you'll notice that the color scheme is very much grays and blues um in there and when i saw this pillar i just fell in love with it and actually it comes as you can see with the cushion and the insert which i really really like about next home is that you don't get confused about like what you're buying is that's like an insert and with it will fit the pillow like it all comes together which i really liked because i do have quite a few cushions already cushions pillows i always get them wrong and there's always someone that gets really annoyed at me i think these are cushions i think yeah throw cushions these are throw cushions so you don't need to worry about like the insert or matching you know the cover or anything like that they all come together and i really love this very heritage british kind of tweed fabric i thought that was just so so lovely and we're tying those like more gray tones into the room one thing i really like about the armchair that we've got in there that we have in here is that it's a really versatile chair in the sense of it can be warm or cool it's got both kind of like cool and warm tones woven through so as long as you pair it with cool tones with grays with blues it goes really really cool and then in this room i paired it with much warmer tones like my beige my neutrals and it looks really really warm so it's so funny but i just thought this would be a really lovely one to go either on that chair or on the main sofa and then i also picked up these which again a slightly herringbone i really really liked them they're a little bit warmer in fabric actually than what i was expecting we can try them in that room they definitely have the gray threads running through it so i think again it might be one of those fabrics you know what looking at the chair it might be the exact same fabric as my chair no, because they're from different retailers. No, it's not the same fabric, but it's very, very similar. So I think this is going to be the kind of cushion that will go no matter what kind of like cool or warm tone, like color palette you're working with. But I thought that was really lovely. In terms of squishiness, this one's definitely a bit squishier. But I still think this would be a really nice one. This price wise, oh, it's a Laura Ashley one. So this one was much more spenny than this one, whereas I think this is just a next own. Yeah, this was only £10. That is really good for a £10 cushion, actually. I picked up a second one of those because I wanted to make sure that I had two. So what I was thinking was maybe these two on the on the big sofa, like either side, and then maybe this one on the armchair by itself. We can have a little bit of a play around and see what works. And then lastly is this that I ordered. Now this isn't actually for the front room, this is for in here. And it's this really cute, actually quite big doormat. Now what I really liked about it was the kind of braided, like vibe to it i thought it was really nice and we don't actually have a doormat to the back door here and the amount of times we've come in from outside when it's been raining or a little bit drizzly and you bring muddy footprints in so i figured that we really could do with like a big doormat to go there and i really really liked this one i thought it was quite different had a few design details that i really really liked and i thought that would be a great addition so those are the pieces i picked up from next home it's now time to start styling them up getting things organized and sorted and really getting that room to a place that i'm so super happy with Well, this is a situation I am very, very happy with. I've not taken the tags off the cushions yet because I just wanted to make sure I definitely loved them. The herringbone one is my absolute favorite. I think it looks so good on this chair, just like really classic heritage British. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So we've just got a little basket down here with like blankets and things like that. We've got a weighted blanket in there, just a cozy blanket to throw over. And I think these cushions work so, so well on the sofa. And I've added a little white throw. What do we think? 
Does it kind of detract from the fact that it's supposed to be like a blue sofa? I'm not sure I could really do with your help, but I love how these cushions look. I definitely was right in the sense of like, I think if you put them with warm toned things, they'll look warm. If you put them with cool toned things, they will look cool, which I really, really like. And then I've just got this little um, side table, which I had with me in the old flat. If you will remember, I did a little DIY job with that. I got it off Facebook Marketplace. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this room is coming along, but I was thinking to myself after unpackaging everything from the next order, I swear I ordered a bouquet of flowers. And when I went through the order, like details, it said they were supposed to be in there with the doormat bag and it wasn't. So I've just been on the phone to the customer service team and they were really great to be fair. They were like, yeah, it, it says here that it's been delivered. I'm like, I know. It says it was in this order, but it's not arrived. Um, so they were really, really great. They have reordered it for me um, and it should be here tomorrow. So I'm really excited for those to arrive because you guys know how much I love my faux flowers. I feel like they really make a room and really help with regards to just kind of like finishing it off. Um, I love real flowers, don't get me wrong, but faux flowers are just so much easier at making sure that there's always lovely foliage in the room so i'm really excited for those to arrive tomorrow and we can really really like style up the shelves properly i think i want to wait for those to arrive before i style up the shelves just to make sure that i know exactly where they're going to be going how it's going to look and all of that jazz but it's just making me really happy how much this room is coming together i feel like it's been so derelict for so long. It's really lovely to see some life coming back into it. Good morning, everyone. I don't know if you're going to be able to see a difference. You probably can't at all, but I certainly can. But I'm actually vlogging on my new vlogging camera. And when I say new vlogging camera, it is actually exactly what I used to have. The exact same camera, but... I've got to tell you this actually, when I was in Portofino, my camera went a little bit kaput. I completely destroyed it, which I'm really, really sad about. I have actually done really well with that camera. I've had it for about two years. And most people I know that vlog like as much as we do, they'll usually go through one every like six to eight months. So I feel like I have made that camera last really, really well, but I don't know how the footage was the first half of this video because I was having to hold onto the lens. Let me show you actually, because it is just horrendous, I've got it here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. So basically, one of the screws, it's this one here, completely came off when I was in Portofino. So the lens, as I hold the camera up, has been like this, just flapping about. So I've been having to like hold it still. So I don't know if you've all been able to tell um, in the last clip, but it is just completely broken. And I did go to a few like repair shops and see if I could just get a little replacement screw and nowhere seemed to do it. Um, so I've finally bitten the bullet and I ordered myself a new one. I mean, it's kind of probably quite overdue anyway because I did find the autofocus on that camera was really starting to go but I'll be able to keep that as like a spare as a backup just in case I ever need it but it feels really weird vlogging on a new camera I feel like you're probably not going to get this because obviously to you guys I'm just like chatting but to me I'm speaking to a camera but it does get to a point where you almost have like a bit of a connection with this camera like you're so used to looking at the same thing like I knew exactly where the scuffs were and where the marks were and this brand new camera is a little bit intimidating so <laughs> I'm gonna have to get used to this, but it feels very swanky and very nice to have again and to have a nice brand new piece of equipment to use. So let me know if you notice a difference in terms of quality or like focus or anything like that. I do wonder if you'll be able to tell because as I said, it's the exact same camera just a new version um but i'm up got minimal makeup again this morning i've just gone for a little bob um and i'm wearing one of my favorite dresses this is actually oh i've just realized there's no strap i'm gonna have to add the camera strap to it i will automatically usually go to like hold it when i hold it in the mirror um i will definitely have to get that because oh, i don't want to break another camera um, and I do, I'm not the best in terms of, sometimes I do drop it, sometimes things happen. Um, but yeah, this dress, it's quite an old one. I'll see if I can find something similar, I'll link it down below. It's from River Island, and it's just like a really easy, comfy, autumnal dress, perfect for weather like today. It's another grey, miserable day outside. It's gloomy, it's dark, it's wet, and I just want to be nice and covered up, but it's not too cold. So I wanted to wear something that's like fairly loose, fairly lightweight, but still looks really beautiful, and I love the khaki tones. I think they're just so, so 
so lovely. It's honestly one of my favourite dresses. I'm so sad they don't do it anymore. So I'll see if I can find something similar to link for you guys because it's such a perfect autumnal dress. So that is one exciting delivery this morning and I actually wasn't expecting this to arrive today. It was due to arrive tomorrow. So that was a nice little surprise in the post. So I'm now just waiting for my faux flowers to arrive so that we can carry on styling up the living room. But I wanted to show you a parcel that actually arrived whilst I was away in Portofino and I'm so, so excited about this because this is one of the brands I just absolutely adore, especially in autumn, winter. I feel like they are just like such a staple brand for me in autumn, winter. And that is L'Occitane. I absolutely adore L'Occitane. Actually, fun fact, one of my first ever blogging events in London was an event with, with L'Occitane and it was like just off Oxford Circus. And I remember I was so nervous because I was still quite like new in the game. I hadn't really traveled into London. I used to get such anxiety traveling down to London. Um, you can definitely tell I was never born to be a London girl. I was definitely born to be like a countryside girl. Um, but yeah, I remember it was such a big moment for me and it was such a big event. I absolutely loved it. So they will always hold a really special place in my heart. And I feel like when it comes to autumn, winter, I absolutely just fall in love with them again. Sometimes I can kind of forget about Loxtown a little bit in spring, summer. Because to me, they're like a very autumn, winter brand. Don't know why, they just are. Um, I think it's especially because they are definitely one of the best brands when it comes to like gifting and like Christmas. They always do really good Black Friday sales, which I am already planning the Black Friday content. I know it's so far away, but these are the things we have to start planning really, really far in advance. So anyway, enough rambling. I thought I would show you what I picked up because I did myself a rather hefty order. I got a little bit excited when I was on the website and there were so many products that I was like, oh my goodness, I remember this, I love this. And there was a few that I saw that I hadn't tried before. So I placed a rather large order. So the first one I'm so excited about because this is one of my favorite favorite serums in the world and I'm actually running out of my Estee Lauder um, advanced night repair and I like to change up my skincare a lot. I don't like to just buy the same thing and use that for like two years straight. I like to, when I run out of a product, maybe purchase something that's similar but different because I do find that that really helps my skin to make sure that it's always getting like the skincare benefits from it. So this is the Immortel Reset Overnight Serum. It's an oily serum which I really, really like. I smothered my face in oil yesterday actually. I feel like coming back from Portofino, going from that temperature difference. It was really warm there, it was really humid, and coming back to cold, wet, like England is just not been great for my skin. So I literally smothered my face in my Ren oil last night and I do feel like it's really helped. Um, and I used a hair mask on my hair last night just to really kind of give myself a bit of moisture. Um, so I really do like an oil serum. An oil burst serum I think is perfect for something overnight because it really just helps your skin to drink it up. It's literally like a glass of water for your skin and I absolutely adore the Immortel range. I think it's so, so gorgeous. And one of those ranges that is like, it's not too, pricey i know that when it comes to skincare with a lot of things i usually say that you pay for what you get but i do sometimes find there are brands that are maybe a much more affordable price point but still create really good products and i definitely think l'occitane is one of them um so this is what the serum looks like and it's just honestly such a great one a great gift as well if you know someone that's looking for a new serum i then picked up a new product that I haven't tried, but it is from the Immortel range. So I thought, you know what? I love the serum so much, I wanted to give this a try. And I am on the hunt for some new moisturizers at the moment and just trying out a few different things for my skin. So this is the Immortel Divine Cream. It's an advanced youth face cream. And I know I don't need to worry too much about anti-aging and all of that jazz, but I am aware that prevention is always so much easier than reversing the signs of aging. So it is something I am starting to think about and I'm just really starting to kind of implement into my skincare routine. Um, I just, oh, I feel like this feels like such a luxurious range. Oh my goodness, look at that packaging. <gasps> that is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love that. So I think this is an overnight cream. It doesn't specifically say, so maybe it's a day or night cream, but I think for me, I much for a gel during the day. And this is definitely more of like a creamy cream. Oh, that smells amazing. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to try that. That feels so luxurious, so I picked up that. Then, what next? Oh my goodness, so exciting. Right, next I picked up the L'Occitane Le Hue. 
I believe is how you pronounce it, oil to milk. And this is basically a facial makeup remover, but like a really, really oil based one. So it's great if you've got like waterproof mascara and things like that, anything that's really stubborn to get off. You really wanna get deep into your skin. I have been wanting to try this for a while because a lot of people rave about this and I'm really enjoying trying different cleansers. For a while I got really stuck on the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm and I do absolutely love that. But I think it's really nice to try like new products, try them out, see how they kind of like react with your skin. And I definitely find that different on different days I need different cleansers. So if I've like been in London and I want something really oily and that's really gonna take out like the grime of the city, I like something like this. Whereas if I've just been at home all day, I can just use my Lazelle Cleanse and Polish. So yeah, it says it's for all skin types even sensitive, face, eyes, and lips, waterproof makeup. So yeah, that sounds like a really good one. I wish I had that in Portofino because I wore a lot of waterproof mascara and the cleanse and polish was not quite like rough enough to take it off. So I did find I had panda eyes a lot when I woke up the next morning, which is just my worst, absolute worst. I then picked up the Immortel Plissus. Honestly, I'm so bad with French, I'm so sorry, but this is the Proactive Skincare Essential Water. So I need to remind myself why I picked this up. A li like a splash of vitality, this lightweight toner leaves a light hydrating veil for radiant and energized looking skin. That's why it's a toner. And I have spoken about this a lot, but I have feel like I feel like toner has changed my skin recently. It's changed the game for me. And I definitely started to notice a few breakouts when I was importing it and I didn't bring my toner out with me. And I think this is it. This is what kind of like gets my skin from okay to radiant glowing and spot free like it really just helps get out those last like bits of like grime and dirt and grub from your skin and it just makes so much difference in my skincare so i'm really excited to try that and that smells really nice and fresh i like that love the packaging of lots as well it feels so luxurious which is why i love it for gifting people um i then picked up the Lux Tan Body Cream, and I used to love this so much. It's one of my favorite body creams. And I'm really wanting to dabble, especially in autumn winter, with some really richer, thicker body creams. So this is the Creme Ultra Rich Corpse or Ultra Rich Body Cream from Lux Tan, and it, I cannot wait to smell on this. Oh, there's a seal on it. No, can't smell it through the seal. I will open that in a bit. Um, but I love the packaging. These are all like obviously really sustainable. And that's something I really love about Loxitan. They've always been pioneers for sustainability within their like skincare and their ranges. And I do believe that if you have empty products, you can take them back to the store. I do believe that that is true. But yeah, love that body cream. And then lastly, I picked up something I've never tried before, but I've heard amazing things. And it's the foaming bath from L'Occitane. And I'm loving my baths at the moment, especially coming into autumn, winter, honestly. <sighs> I don't think I could live without a bath. I don't know, I don't understand people that aren't bath people. Alex isn't a bath person and I'm like, how? When it's like raining outside, you come in and you just wanna get really cozy and warm. I also sometimes find that when I'm really cold, I just want a bath to warm me up, like even a blanket or like a dressing gown doesn't do it. I need a steaming hot bath and I love it. So I'm really excited to try this. It says that it is designed from Origin Lavender Essential Oil from Hot Provence. Amazing lavender is like one of my favorite scents when it comes to baths as well. Oh my gosh, that literally smells like a lavender field. Oh, I'm obsessed. Oh, I'm absolutely obsessed. So I cannot wait to try that. Maybe I need to run myself a bath tonight. But yeah, some really exciting new end products. I feel like. I love a new season. I love adding in new bits and just changing up my skincare and just really reacting to what my skincare needs and looking into, you know, different products that are going to serve it for the different seasons. So at the moment, I definitely need much more hydration, much more like oil based products. And I just need to give my skin a big old drink. So I thought I would show you what I picked up because I'm such a big fan of Lox Tan and I really did go wild on this order. But I will link it all down below for you guys if you're also looking for some new season skincare. Oh, well, I like this setup. This is looking really, really good. I think it's officially time to take the labels off the pillows because they've had Alex's seal of approval and they were really, really comfy. We sat in here last night and watched a film. and made me so happy, but the flowers have arrived. I am so happy. And I have to say, actually, complete kudos to Next because it was one of those situations, I've literally never had this happen before where it says that it arrived in the package and it just wasn't there. And when I was on the phone to them, they were saying, oh, well, was the package damaged? I was like, nope. Okay, uh, so, you know, and like we were going through it and I was like, look, they just weren't in the package, but it says they should have been. But looking at this box, they definitely wouldn't have fit in that little bag, but my goodness oh my goodness these are gorgeous 
absolutely gorgeous oh i'm so in love and they're really autumnal and wintry and that's what i really wanted just a little bit of autumnal decor because i'm not i'm not like the biggest seasonal decor kind of a person other than christmas you know that we go all out at christmas but when it comes to like autumn or spring i'm not the kind of person like i'm not going to be putting pumpkins around my house you know like little as, as cute as they are i just don't think that's very me um goodness me this is an absolute mission to get into um it's just not the most me kind of way of decorating so for me to add a bit of autumnal decor in it has to be in quite subtle ways I'm just gonna, oh my goodness me i literally had to go and get scissors for that um and i feel really bad because our cleaners have literally just been this morning there's a little bit of glitter in here so i feel like it's kind of gone on the floor which makes me a bit sad but that's also part of the reason why i was just like waiting to unbox these with you because it makes me so happy after the cleaners have been i literally feel like having cleaners is something that has completely like changed the game for me because they just do such an excellent job i do find that having a bit of a bigger house is a little bit harder to maintain and obviously i know compared to some people it is nothing in terms of the size of it but just having that little extra helping hand with regards to like cleaning and looking after it has made such a huge difference so it's looking really really good in this room and in the other room because this room had been a bit of a dumping ground it had gotten a little bit dusty and just a little bit like it needed a bit of a zhuzh so they've zhuzhed in here and in the kitchen i'll show you at the kitchen in a minute but the flowers look absolutely incredible so they're like a really lovely autumnal wintry bouquet so as i was saying i'm not the kind of person that's going to put on like you know like orange leaves and you know really autumnal things and like loads of dried flowers it's just not really me i like to inject just a little hint and i feel like these are a bit more autumnal than some of my other bouquets because we've got some like blueberries in here we've got like this really lovely kind of like almost frosted foliage i feel like they need to kind of I need to zhuzh them up a little bit and just kind of open them up so that they're really ready for the bouquet. But I just thought this was so lovely. Ready for the bouquet? Ready for the vase. But I just thought they were such a gorgeous, gorgeous bouquet. And I love the pops of blue because obviously you've got a lot of blue happening in here and a lot going on with regards to the kind of colour scheme. It really is like a blue and grey colour scheme. And I just thought these were such a perfect addition. So now that they've arrived, we can finally start styling up the shelves. So what do we think of the shelf styling? It's a little bit, I don't know. I'm really undecided what I think. I want to keep them really bare and really plain, but I'm not sure if they are actually better when they're like quite filled and quite maximalist. Let me know your thoughts, but I just wanted to keep Alex's record player as quite a like feature. So I've taken away the speakers and stuff because I felt like they were detracting from the record player. So we've got all the vinyls, the record player, and then these are some dried flowers that I received a really, really long time ago that have lasted so well. And I love how well the blue goes with the rest of the room. And I've just done like a little trinket tray of some candles, reed diffuser, all of that jazz. Um, I want to do a bit more with this oak beam. Um, I've just currently got one little lonely candle there. Um, I think I'm going to do a few more things on this just to style it up a little bit. I've managed to bring in a basket, like a little tray basket. This is like from Primark Home years ago, um, just to house all of the controllers basically, just so that they're not so ugly. Um, so that just sits there. And of course, we've got the little, little fireplace underneath. What do we think of this basket here? I'm undecided at whether that should stay. Um, and then this side I'm struggling with quite a bit because the flowers that I had obviously bought and envisioned for this space I think are too tall I think either the vase is too tall I maybe need to get a different vase and like I can obviously because they are faux flowers I can just bend them and shrink them um or I should put a lamp here I'm undecided let me know um but I've just done a few little like books a couple of trays and things like that um the xbox and the playstation i'm not entirely sure not playstation nintendo switch i'm not entirely sure if there's anything i can do to get rid of these because i can't exactly put that in a box because it will overheat so let me know if you have any tips on hiding ugly things from your boyfriend <laughs> and let me know what you think of the flowers um but the rest of the room is just looking so so lovely now it looks really cozy it looks really homey i love 
the sofa and how it works with like the pillows and all of that jazz and I just think it's really coming together. The one thing I'm undecided about is this mirror. I always feel like every room needs a mirror but I don't think the style of this works and I'm also struggling with this side completely. I don't know whether just to get a radiator cover, I don't know whether to get like a big cabinet in front of there because that is just not working. So that's kind of the only thing that I'm like really really undecided about um, and then other than that we're just missing a rug and a poof. But one of the final pieces of the puzzle that I feel like I always have to christen a room with is a new Rediffuse. This one is from The White Company, which is literally my favourite. This is a new one, actually. I have never tried this one before. This is Day. There's a Day one and there's a Night one. This is Bergamot, Apple and Jasmine. And I was in the store the other day and I was like, you know what, that's really different. It's not like anything I've ever tried. I really, really like the sound of that and it smelt amazing. So I'm going to put that up. I think that might go on the little oak beam underneath the TV just so that it can fill the room with the most lovely scent. And a sparkly shimmer on our skin. absolutely love how that looks that is so so nice i love the fact that it comes in a square bottle i feel like it's just so classy and it smells amazing it's just like a really nice fresh daytime scent a perfect living room scent if you ask me so i'll link that down below um and i feel like it just adds a little something extra to this wooden beam this like oak beam i definitely need to get something on this side because it's looking a little bit you know skew whip i'm thinking maybe a plant maybe some more candles let me know your thoughts but i really really love how it's all starting to come up together and i realize i've not shown you in the kitchen for a while so i thought i would show you a few updates so i don't think there's too much going on but this is how the kitchen is looking, which just makes me so happy. Like even on a gray, gloomy day, it's still really nice and bright in here because this is the south facing part of the house. Um, I've got my dried out hydrangeas over here, which are doing really well. You can definitely tell how much I love my flowers, no matter what season it is, no matter what time of year. Um, but the main thing that you've not seen, I've moved, this was actually, was in the living room. This is a ottoman that my grandpa handmade for me so it's absolutely beautiful we've got that in the corner i feel like it really ties in together works really nicely with the table and chairs and everything like that so and this is the other um chair the Dunelm chair as you can see it just looks so much warmer in here um because we've got so many more warm tones i definitely think it's like affected as well by the light because there's so much more natural light in here it definitely pulls out the like warmer fibers in the chair which i think is really nice but um yeah i'm so happy with how the living room is coming together it just makes me want to get all cozy and have a movie night i definitely think on the agenda tonight is a bath and a movie because i just want to live my best little time in my life and that is literally the best way to spend an evening in autumn so i think i'm going to leave this video here i really hope you guys enjoyed seeing the new home updates everything that's been going on i've been trying to keep you updated as much as possible because it's just making me so happy i'm definitely glad that we waited until now to do it because i think I wouldn't have been in the cozy headspace to have done this back in like May due time. It definitely needed to have been done during the cozy months. So it's so nice to get that room up really nice and snug. I think the two main things that I'm missing now is just a rug for the middle of the room and like a puff footstool type thing that we can, you know, just snuggle down in and put our feet up so that we can have really lovely movie nights. So any recommendations, let me know. And if you could give me any tips and advice, I would absolutely love that because it's a work in progress. It's getting there. It's getting there. And it's making me so, so happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, I'd absolutely love it if you hit it now. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.